We're going to read, thank you, one more time, stand with us if you will. We're going to read the first 11 verses of Romans chapter 5. We'll read responsibly. I'll read one verse if you'll read the other one until we read the last verse together. The Bible reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And together, and not, not only, only so, but, but we, we also joy in God through our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have, we have now received the atonement. atonement. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We're going to pray. And I'm going to ask Joseph if he will bring my glasses out of my uh, briefcase. But let's pray together. Precious Father, thank you for the honor and privilege of justification. We know, Lord God, this is a wonderful reminder as to what has taken place and what you've done for us through your Son. Now, Lord God, I ask that the love that you've shown to your creation and to the church, that we will have a greater grasp as to the meaning the understanding and the effectiveness of what you've done on the cross. And let it be applied to our hearts and let it bring security in the times that we're living in. We ask it in Jesus' name. Take full control. Have your way and we'll give glory and honor to your name. This we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, today, I want to talk about understanding and receiving God's love. Understanding and receiving God's love. Many of God's people are facing attacks of Satan. Many are looking at the conditions of our cities, our nation, and the nations of the world. Threats of violence, of COVID. Murders, homicides. Immigration, fires out in the West governmental confusion and corruption, to mention just a few. And the threat of our future protection and security seems to bring uncertainties and fears to many. But the Lord spoke of the times that we're living in. And he told us that when certain things begin to happen, he said, see that you be not troubled. 
He said, for these things must come to pass. So we're living in the closing days where the prophecies that were given to us 2,000 plus years ago, some are being fulfilled. And we're seeing the evil times that we're living in. And uh, God has blessed us that we would still be around in these times. But we are to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. See that you be not troubled. Not troubled in mind. Not be shaken in your faith. Hallelujah. God has not changed. As uh, George was praying earlier, the thought came to me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible makes it clear. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So when you think of it like that, we must count it all joy because we are the part of the righteous group. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall in all kinds of trials and testings and temptations. Knowing this, that the testing of your faith being much more precious than gold that is tried. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So there's uh, three things I want to add or add, uh, leave with you today when it comes to understanding and receiving God's love. I want to emphasize that. Not only understanding God's love, but God wants us to receive his love. So we find here in Romans chapter 5, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 4, and, and, and remember these chapters, uh, when they wrote on the scrolls, it wasn't segmented like that. It was just a complete writing. But of course, scholars have separated these here by um, chapters. But anyway, look up at chapter 4, and he ends this particular chapter talking about Abraham's faith, and he said it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses or sins, and was raised again for our justification. Then he moves right on in, and says, therefore, as a result of what he said in the theme that he was speaking of justification, Christ being our righteousness, he said, as a result of being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Uh, that's not only calmness and tranquility of mind, but it's uh, no hostility between ourselves and God in our relationship. So we thank God, someone say peace. And the time that we're living in is really good to know the Prince of Peace. So the first thing I want to add and leave with you is understanding and receiving God's love through justification. Justification means declared righteous. Acquitted it. Released forgiven so the Bible tells us that we've been declared righteous or justified by faith 
in Christ, by faith in what Jesus has done on the cross. So we always have to go back to the cross. No matter how modern, uh, as one writer said, technology gets, no matter how many methods may change, the doctrine, the teaching of Christ never changes. It is solid, and so we must at times go back to the cross to be reminded of how it all began and what God did for us. So understanding and receiving God's love, that's what he wants us to do through the act of justification, what God has done for us. He declared us righteous. And if you follow Romans in chapter, from the first of the chapters, how Paul, in writing to the Romans, uh, proved everybody was guilty. The first three chapters, he proved everybody was guilty. The whole world was guilty before God. And then he went on to introduce the truth that uh, there was none righteous, not one. Nobody was counted as doing good. He said they all turned aside and gone another way. And after he brought us before the judgment bar of God and declared the whole world guilty, and it seemed like he was, he might leave us there before the judgment bar of God saying the whole world is guilty, having no hope and having no way out. But he didn't leave us there. He said, but now there's another righteousness. Another righteousness apart from the law righteousness that was introduced through Moses. And I often say we as Gentiles uh, prior to salvation, we could not relate to the law of Moses. We didn't grow up in that time and we were not a part of the customs and the traditions that God introduced through Moses. We were not a part of that, so we don't understand. Uh, we didn't have firsthand information and experience in those things. But what we can relate to is trying to please God through human merits. Isn't that right? We can relate to trying to do good to be accepted with God. In both cases, they will not work. And so he says, but now at this time, as a result of all uh, that God has done, God has, has uh, there is another righteousness, and it's a righteousness apart from law or works. And that is the righteousness of God by faith. And this is the righteousness that God introduced to us through Paul and the others. And this is the righteousness that um, is upon us today. And I often say if we, still, if we still attempt to please God by being good, then we are still missing the wisdom of God. For it is a righteousness of faith. Thinking in terms of receiving God's love, we look at the conditions of the world, we see the fretting, we see the things that are threatening our lives, and we tend to be facing things that uh, can be painstaking and devastating to our lives, things that are happening to us. And sometimes it can question God's love for us. And so it is because of this, the intent of the Lord for this message is to speak to us that fears may be calmed, that God may bring more security to our lives, even in the rocky times that we're living in. Understanding, God says, 
and receiving God's love through this act of justification. God declared when while we were sinners, while we were sinners, not when we had a mind to please God, not when we had done anything good or deserved anything good, but while we were sinners. And he gives an example of the, 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 the quality and the, the kind of love that God has uh, bestowed upon us. He said, uh, for righteous man, uh, uh, um, you, 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 hardly ever anybody would die, but for a good man, morally good person, a person that's really full of good works and, and known for the good reputation. He says some may even dare to die. But he said, but God. While we were not good, while we were not righteous, but while we were sinners, enemies of God, Christ died for us. And that love that he has for us, declaring us righteous through the redemptive act of Jesus Christ, that's love. That's love in its greatest form. When someone lays down their lives for a friend, here in his love, John says, not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave himself. Hallelujah. God wants to remind us that he loves us. Not because we are going to understand everything that happens to us. But he loves us because the truth of God's word cannot be a lie. And when God speaks you can settle it in your heart and mind. For he does not have the tendency nor capacity to lie. Truth can only be truth. He cannot be a lie. So when God speaks it, let it settle in your heart. If God declares you and I righteous, then let's not call ourselves or sell ourselves short. By trying to prove something that's already been proven. We are righteous through the redemptive act of God. Look at someone and say, settle it in your heart and mind. You're righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understanding and receiving God's love. God so loved the world. You know, the good thing about God's kind of love, it moves him to action. I'm glad for that kind of love and it's a good example for us, right? God so, so loved till he gave. He didn't have many sons at that time. But he gave his only begotten son. He was compelled. He was moved into action. For that quality of love. Hallelujah. Understanding it and we can appreciate. We've been declared as righteous. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. My God. Justification comes by faith. The Bible says he was delivered for our sins or our offenses, but raised for our justification. And I was thinking on that. His resurrection was the validation of the sacrifice of his death and the proof of our acceptance. In Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 
I'm going to read a little something here. What Paul said. He says, um, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal deaf doom must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, when this change comes, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? You know, the Bible says he did not leave our soul in hell. That's what he, Jesus had to say. He did not leave his soul in hell. It would have been a sad day if God had left his son in hell. But he raised him up, brought him through. In spite of all the principalities and powers that tried to keep him there. While he was there, he took the keys. Of death, hell, and the grave. And he rose in great victory. The Bible says in verse 56, 15, 56 in Corinthians, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law, but Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was sown in corruption, our bodies as we die. That which is natural comes first, right? Then that which is spiritual. And if, we, if we've borne the image of the earthly, then we shall bear the image of the heavenly. And Christ was the first fruits of, of this resurrection if Christ had not been raised from the dead then our faith would be vain our salvation would be null and void and we would still be in our sins and so we're not still in our sins because of justification he declared us righteous and as I was thinking on that, I was thinking about God the Son and God the Father, how the Son looked all the way to the end and saw what sin did to humanity. And he saw hell had enlarged itself. He saw that there would be many that would go to the place and many would be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone because of sin. And God didn't want that. He was so compelled to do something about it. And it was like Jesus said, Father, Father, prepare me a body. I'll go and give my life so that whoever would believe would be rescued from the tormenting flames of fine brimstone. It was the love that compelled him to do this. It was nothing that we had to offer him. It was the love that compelled him to do something to go and die upon the cross that we might find justification. But look at someone who says, see the love in this act of God. God loved us so much. He loves us. 
He loves us. All the promises centered around the empty tomb. All the promises of God centers around the empty tomb. He's not there anymore. Hallelujah. He's risen. Jesus, knowing eternal separation from God was the ultimate, came to die for us that we would not remain corrupt. I want to read a passage in 1 Kings chapter 3. In the Bible, in Solomon's time, when he first came to the kingship as a young as a young king, his wisdom was tested, and God wanted to show the people that he was with Solomon and he was endowed with God's wisdom. And so we have hear an account of two women and I'm going to read beginning at verse 16 chapter 3 in 1st Kings then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him and the one woman said oh my lord I and this woman dwell in one house I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. She laid on the child and smothered and killed the child, her own child. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept, in other words, while I slept, and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, Behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is your son, thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, this is the wisdom. But but I want to show you more than just the wisdom. Then said the king, the one says, this is my son that liveth. And thy son is is the dead. And the other said, nay, but thy son is the dead. And my son is the living. In other words, they're arguing back and forth. And the king said, bring me a sword. They brought a sword before the king. Listen to what the king said. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. In other words, he says, okay, one is saying this is mine, the other is not. The other says this is mine and the other is not. Solomon couldn't tell. He didn't know which one was telling the truth. But there was a wisdom that he had that brought out the compassion of the true one. So as he said, bring me a sword to you. Let me divide them. Cut them right in half. Give the woman woman half of them and the other one take the other one. And the woman, the mother of the, the, the living son, the true mother, could not bear to see her son ripped in half. She would rather give that child to the other woman than to see the child ripped in half. And it was so clear that what Jesus did for us, 
He couldn't bear to see us burn in the lake of fire and brimstone. Compassion moved him to do something about it, saints. God wants us to not only understand, but believe in his love. Believe that God loves you. No matter what we face in life. But we must know that God loves us with such a perfect love. No one is going to have that kind of compassion and reach out to help people and die for another. Second thing I want to bring before you is understanding God's love and receiving or understanding and receiving God's love through tribulations. Through the trials and tribulations. That's where many of us live now, going through things that we may not like. They may be devastating to us. We may want them to just leave. We may want to experience something so much better, and we cannot understand why these things won't go away as they should. So they tend to discourage us, to make us question how God feels about us. But the Lord said to me, I want you to talk about my love and share with my people I love them and what God has done in the past. So understanding, number two, God's love and receiving his love through tribulations. Now look what he says here in chapter 5. Talked about we were justified and we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. What a great thing God has done. But then he went on uh, in light of our justification. How do we respond to life's trials and situations? He goes and he says, verse 3, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulations work at patience. So, as I was looking more intently into that word and the idea behind it, it was making clear that God, what Jesus taught his disciples was, you must have a different outlook and attitude toward trials. You must have a different understanding as to why trials come to the believers. And with that understanding, in light of what God has done, you can rejoice even through the trials because of what they work in us. So that's the basis of rejoicing, knowing what these things are accomplishing in us in spite of the fact that we do not understand all the time why these things are happening, but we know according to the word that something is happening and God is bringing us more and more in line with the beauty of his love and holiness and character as he is allowing these things to happen to us. So our attitude, he's saying, I want you to know this that I love you I want you to understand that my love uh, uh, doesn't go back and forth I want you so that you can understand that there's still a process of maturity and development and growth for every believer every true child of God so that when trials are coming we as we grow and understand it more we can understand we can just praise and thank God because nothing changes about what God has done for us so it's an act of development or act of maturity when we can learn to praise God in the midst of the things that we are going through. I want to pause and let's take a moment and praise God even now. He is deserving of praise. He is deserving of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now think what kind of Christians we would be if we could only praise God when things go well. What kind
kind of Christians would we be? Would we be acceptable to God in the sense? Uh, would, we, would we be people that uh, uh, have developed character? If we could only praise God when things look right, feel right, and seem like they're going right. But I want you to see the process in which God brought in this in this word, understanding and receiving God's love through tribulations. Tribulation here, this word means afflictions, troubles, distresses, sufferings. Understanding God's love, seeing God's love and receiving his love in the midst of the things that we face. And believe me, saints, we face a lot of things, right? So, tribulations, look at someone and say, tribulations cannot destroy my hope. Amen. All right. He says, verse 5, verse 3, verse, yes. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation works patience. We glory in tribulations, we boast, one writer says, we boast about our afflictions, we triumph even in our troubles, we praise also in our distresses. Why? Because tribulation works patience or endurance. I want you to get the picture. Tribulation works patience or endurance. Suffering or tribulation is the same, produces Fortitude. Trouble, same thing, produces endurance or steadfastness. So what he's saying is when we get saved and we come to God as believers, we don't have fortitude. We don't have the steadfastness like we need. We don't have the ability to endure as we should. So God begins to work it through us as we trust him in the midst of the trials. Isn't that right? So I like this, what, he, uh, what one writer says, uh, th this, this uh, tribulation works patience. It is the ability to forward right on ahead in spite of everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. If that's not developed in us, guess who will turn us back on every hand? The Bible says the schemes and wiles of the devil are many. His plan is to turn us around, to discourage us, to make us feel that God doesn't love us or God's not going to keep his word or you done fouled up so you're not going to get the promises of God. He's a liar and the father of lies, so all he can do is lie. Isn't that right? But when we understand who God is and, and when we understand the faithfulness of the almighty God, when we understand that he doesn't have the tendency nor possibility to lie, when we understand that God alone, and he honors his word and he watches over that word, Word to perform the word. Hallelujah. When we understand that the Lord cannot change him. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. When we understand that a little bit better, when we understand who we are serving, when we understand them, that, oh, no, he, he's not the one that's hanging on the cross anymore. He's the one, glory to God, that's coming back in the book of Revelation as king of kings and Lord of Lords, hallelujah. When we understand who we're serving, then we can give God praise in the midst of the trials of knowing this, that we're only passing through and we're not there to stay. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We will suffer many, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Brother, sister, if, if that's true, and I know it is, if I don't like to suffer, I'm going to have a hard time with God. He did that right. Because <laughs> he said, many of the afflictions of the righteous come out of one only to enter another one. 
Now y'all got to hear what I'm saying here. You see what goes. Hallelujah. You, you come out of another and you cross your legs and say, ah, praise the Lord, I made it. Not yet. Not yet. Hallelujah. So if you don't understand that, ah, it could be discouraged and you want to throw up your hands and say, is it worth it? But I'll tell you, hallelujah, look in the book of Revelation. Look to the end and look and see what God has in store for you. Look and see, hallelujah, the day, hallelujah, when God will wipe away all the tears from your eyes. Look and see the promises of God. And you'll say it's worth it all. Hallelujah, it's worth it all. Hallelujah, tribulations produce endurance, fortitude. Ah, how many times have you been in a situation and said this, I can't take no more. You feel that God's got to hear me because I can't take no more of this. God says, no, I hear you. But you don't know what I can do through you. How many times have you felt like stopping and trying something else uh, only to discover God that gives you strength that you didn't know about? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God says it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got that sometimes we have to remember that it's he that has begun the good work in us. We, we, we didn't start this thing. It wasn't a bright idea that we had um, to get saved. It, it was, this was not the case. It was God from the foundation of the earth. He looked upon a lost humanity and he saw the flames and, and he said, I want to go and redeem them from the flames. It was God's idea. He that had begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it. Hallelujah. He's going to perform it. I remember so many times I felt like, boy, if there was something else I could do and still go to heaven. <laughs> but it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Hallelujah. <laughs> I told God one time, I said, God, I remember starting out. I said, God, what do you want? What do you want from me? Can't do no more. I can't, I can't give no more. Just as calmly he says, I just want honest ministry. Like, wow, that sounds simple enough, but why is it so hard? You know? <laughs> My God, hallelujah. But then he said something else. And this is for somebody here today. He said, if you go through, I can use you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me say this. A man said it like this, and, I, and, I, and I, I copied that. He said, a faith that's not been tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Ah, how many want to see the great things of God? Ah, I want to do great things for God. Hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> God's going to test the faith. And see, he, he already knows what he wants us to see. Hallelujah. Our shortcomings in where we need to come up. So he allowed things to happen. Man, you, and especially when you're feeling spiritual. <laughs> Look like he just chooses things to, <laughs> to test us. Hallelujah. So that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was going through one time and you know, somebody said, boy, that man's always going through. You're right. <laughs> All that shall live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. I remember going through and talking to God. God, what are you doing? <laughs> God says, I'm trying to establish you. 
I said, what do you mean? Trying to set your heart up on sound biblical principles. You see, if our heart's not established, come on now, y'all. We really can't yet be trusted if our heart's not been established. God will use us to do something, and the devil will attack us. We might end up saying a few nasty words toward God because we don't understand why he allowed this to happen. But when he works that endurance, that fortitude, that strength to go on through when it doesn't look right, when he's working that in us. How many times have you come through something and you look back and said, Lord, I don't know how I came through that. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, my soul looked back and wonder how I got over. You see, his ways are past finding out. You, you can't understand it while you're in it. It's only after you co- he brought you through it and you looking back, said, wow, my God, my God, God Almighty. But he works the beauty in us through the tribulation. So he wants us to understand his love uh, 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 doesn't change. His love is not that kind of love that's fickle. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me. God said, my love is not fickle. My love is not fickle. I was looking for my definition that he was talking about when he was sharing fickleness, changing. <laughs> changes God doesn't want he said fickle here in, 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 in the Webster says changing frequently especially as regard to one's loyalties interests and affections he said my love is not and, and in the old English that word there was a root word that mean same word deceitful My love is not deceitful. But I'm a reliable God. I'm a trustworthy friend. Hallelujah. So you can trust God. No matter what things look like. Sooner or later, he'll bring you through it. Isn't that right? God is faithful. So understanding and receiving his love in the midst of trials and tribulations. Not that kind of love. That changes on you. And that would be a, a bad thing that if God changed right in the middle of in midstream when you need him the most. Isn't that right? He won't do it. He'll be there with you. Then he said, uh, tribulation works patience, patience, endurance. Or tribulation works patience or endurance and suffering or, or fortitude. And and patience works experience. And that word experience in the Greek, it means tested, accepted, approved. And it relates to character. Tested. Accepted and approvedness, strength of character, tested character. Job said, After he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Said, Woman. You don't sound like my wife. You, you trying to get me to curse God? 
Uh uh. He was steadfast. Steadfast. Then, after they put him down and talked about him so bad, he uh, said, Job, you, you, you know, you might as well face up to it. There was sin in your life. That's why God's allowing this to happen to you. He tried so hard to justify himself. Couldn't do it because they, they weren't hearing it. And he said, oh, I wish I knew where I could find him. God wasn't saying nothing in the midst of the trial and he longed for God to, to, to vindicate him. And you know, sometimes we go through things, we, we want God to vindicate us. You know, people have been talking about us. People have been saying things. Sometimes loved ones say things. It seems like loved ones don't believe in us, you know. And so we're, we're, we're just saying, oh, well, God's going to show me. God's going to show him. God's going to show him. And look like God ain't hearing a thing about that. He just keep on letting the suffering go through. Finally, Job had to come to this conclusion. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What about you today? Hallelujah. If God don't come through like you want him, you're going to still serve him. You're going to still praise him. Got to praise him, saints. Got to give him the glory because he's the wise master builder. And he's building our lives. So understanding and receiving his love through the things, the trials, the things that we go through. And then he said, patient experience, tested it, proved character, and experience hope or the expectations. And hope makes not a shame, does not disappoint or will not dishonor or disgrace or put to shame, will never disappoint or prove illusory. In other words, there's some things that happen we may be hoping in it's more of an illusion than what God has said. But when God takes us through, in spite of all the things that we go through, his love, his love is shed abroad in our hearts. Let me share with you a couple of examples and please pardon the personal examples, but it's only that it might shed light on what this message is talking about, God's love. God, I mean, I know God works through people. And he shows his love through people many, many times. I remember when my late wife, uh, Betty, was in surgery. She had been in surgery for, well, she was, it was over six hours, long, long time, where they cut her from here somewhere all the way back in the back. That was the first of its kind for me. There I sat in the waiting area, not knowing how difficult the surgery was going to be or what kind of state that I would find her in afterward. And I remember my wife now, Pastor Wanda, came. I, I don't know what she had to do prior to it, but she came and spent the day just sitting with me just to be of comfort because she had been through and she understand how the pain was. I hadn't gone through that. But afterward, I thought about it. I said, I got quite a few friends, but there was not one that was there in my hour of trial. And the Lord brought that back to me when I was developing this word. He said, I was loving you then. I was loving you then. This is another example of God loving through people. I remember when she finally passed. And as I said, part in the personal reference, but it's all to try and make valid the point that I'm making. I remember <clears throat> when she passed and I was so devastated. I could not, I couldn't believe that that had happened to me. And I began to question a lot of things that I thought God had said to me. 
And I remember feeling so alone. And um, so it worked out after she had passed and days and weeks went by. God had spoke to me that he wanted Wanda to be my wife. And so I approached her reluctantly. And I said, God, I can't take another rejection, you know, at this point. <laughs> but he assured me that it would be all right. So I did in obedience. But when I found out and she said yes, I remember going down 64 towards CBN. And, and that deep feeling of aloneness when I understood that he wanted her to be my wife. All of a sudden, I began to feel healing taking place. Just the fact that God still loved me. I began to feel that coming to me in the midst of the pain of loneliness and feeling abandoned. And what just happened, God? What? This was not a part of our agreement. This is this is going through all kinds of changes and in the midst of the devil saying, well, you know, I ain't just taking one. I'm going to take two. And as crazy as that sound, it was convincing in the state that I was in. But when I accepted what God has said and God is my judge, I began to feel a sense of healing taking place in my spirit and in my soul. And God told me again today or yesterday when I was uh, uh, reading and preparing and he was talking about how we must receive his love. He said, I was loving you then. I was loving you then through her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. We don't understand how God loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you one more example, then I'm going to briefly take this to the last point. One other example. All these examples the Holy Spirit just brought to me and wanted me to share them. And uh, so there was a time when, uh, and, and understanding how God's love is, and, and many of you have understood and uh, know and uh, you've been recipients of God's love through others. But when I was about uh, early teen. Uh, I was the product of nine children. My mom and dad lived on a farm, sharecropping, tenor crop, uh, sharecropping. And it was so difficult. Days were very tough, poor, just so many things we suffered. And I remember one day we stayed home from school, or if it may have been in the summer. And something happened in the room. We had a little small oil heater. And... Um, it caught fire somehow, and the whole house burned down. And there we were that day, burned out, nowhere to go. Dad had, my one, one brother had gone, so it was eight there at home. He had to find somewhere before sun went down for his family. And to fast forward, in two weeks' time, Dad had twice as much as he ever owned. God reminded me, he said, I was loving your family then. So we must receive God's love. God loves us, saints. He didn't promise that we wouldn't go through things, but he promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember my father. I remember my father sharing something. There was a man that was a creditor or grocery store owner. And in this small community, it was probably one of the largest stores. And dad went to see if he could bar and get some food because everything burned up. So he went, I think, the next day to try to see if he could get some food on credit with this man who owned the store. Yeah. 
And I remember he said that this, this man was stingy. He fussed if he ever gave you any credit. Stayed on your back to get the money. But this time, Daddy told him that he had just got brought out and lost everything he had. And so he get him a box and he starts to put some things in the box. And we dad said he saw the Spirit of God working with that man whose heart was so tough. He would stop and then he'd get ready to give that little to dad. And he said, well, wait a minute. And he would go back. And he would get something else. And then he would, and after he put that back, he attempted to give that to dad. And said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and that went on and on until that box was so overflowing. Daddy broke down. He said, I, I know that was God because that man won't give you anything. But God works through people sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Finally, um, he wants us to understand and receive his love through what is known as propitiation. Propitiation is the same as atonement to make an at one. To win or regain, it means to win or regain the favor of by doing something that pleases them. You know what he did. The Bible says, verse 6, for when we were yet sinners or without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Because if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we've now received the atonement. God loves us. No matter what it looks like, saints, God loves us. And even if we, or if I don't understand the things that God allows me to go through, or even if you don't understand the things that God may allow you to go through, know this. That his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so God's ways are not our ways. You can't understand God's ways, but what we can do is trust in the integrity of God's goodness and his love for us. Isn't that right? Come on, let's give him thanks again. God says it's, it's, vi it's vital, it's very important for us to receive, understand and receive God's love. One, because it brings security to us. Knowing that God, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of the shootings, in the midst of all the things that are going on in the midst of the things that seems to threaten our security when we understand that, that God says, I'll be with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. And Paul said, yea, in all of these things, we're more than conquerors to Jesus Christ. All of the holy time that Paul lived and worked and all the things that he went through. He said, I am persuaded. Neither death nor life, nor principalities nor powers, 
nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. Glory to God. Angels, principalities, powers, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. But John said, I saw the new city. New Jerusalem, my God. Coming down out of God from heaven. Glory to God. Saw a river of life, he said. The water was pure. My God. Nothing that defiled and unclean was the, could be there in the city. God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There'll be no more night there. No need for the sun. Hallelujah. No need for the sun because the Lord and the son Jesus Christ will be the light thereof. Hallelujah. No more sorrow. No more mourning. No more death. No more sickness. No more pain. No more disease. For the former things will be passed away, he said. Hallelujah. That's not a figment of our imagination. It is the truth. And he said, these things are true and faithful. Tell my servants, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give everyone according to his works. Come on, can we give God some glory? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. We must understand God's love. Hallelujah. What he did in justifying us, understanding his love through the things that we suffer, the tribulation and understanding his love through the atoning death of his son. Hallelujah. What shall we do in light of all that? God said to me, he said, tell them to live like pilgrims. Tell them to live like people that are waiting for their Lord to come. Set your affections on things that are above, not on things of the earth. Father, I thank you, I give you praise. I give you honor and I give you glory. We ask that you'll help us now to focus again on what we have in store for us, Lord God. Paul said, I suppose that the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to compare, be, be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I'm talking, taking my time, saints. It's a real, very important thing that I feel God is saying to us that understand his love, don't understand his love. His love is uh, steadfast, sure, and certain. He don't love you today, and when you do wrong, turn his back on you. He's, he's, he's God. And I will always be with you, he said. So if you will stand with me at this time and let's begin to give God some thanks for his goodness, for his great mercy and for his praise. He's a God of our salvation and a lion of the tribe of Judah. We break chains and fetters. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He'll never leave us nor forsake us.